Hey guys, welcome back. Mike here, Animate Tutorials. Well guys, uh, today we are going to uh, create a color ID mask. Okay, I'm going to explain what it is and how to make one and what you can do with it. Okay, so in order to demonstrate that, I need to create an object. So I'm just going to take a simple polygon cube, pull that up, and I'm going to hit Control A to pull up my attribute editor, go to the polycube tab, set my translate values to zero to get it nice and centered. And I'm going to go into my polycube and I'm going to do a few, uh, sorry, a few subdivisions in height. Let's do three. All right. Okay. So what's the deal with a color ID mask? Well, a color ID mask is a special type of um, diffuse map or, or color map, if you will. And what's a diffuse or a color map? Well, I'll explain. Let's say, and I'll just copy this guy. Let's say I'm preparing a game asset. Okay. Now, if I start to texture this guy with external 2D files, let's say I got a, a picture of bricks and I apply it on the top, and I got a picture of glass and I, you know, and so forth, then I have a number of external files connected to this guy. Okay. Now, a normal color map or diffuse map, I would transfer all this information over to this guy right here, and it would become one file, if you will. Okay. Now, uh, and that would contain, you know, the um, the brick wall and the glass and so forth. A color ID mask is different. Um, a color ID mask is uh, kind of a placeholder. So what you do is you use primary basic shaders and colors to identify areas that you later on want to swap out with materials in, for example, a program like Quixel. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take this guy right here. We're going to right click at a face. And I'm going to select those top faces and I'll take the top as well. And I'm going to right click assign new material. Um, we'll do a Lambert. And we'll make that yellow. Okay. And then we'll take the row in the middle. Right click, assign new material. Another Lambert. And we'll call that red. And then we'll take this one and the bottom. Right click, assign new material. Lambert. And we'll do blue. Okay. So now if you right click and go to object mode, you see that you have a few, this is our standard. You got our red, our uh, yellow, and our blue. And we're now gonna transfer this information over to this guy, okay? So we're gonna right click the object mode. We're gonna select it, and we're gonna set the translate value to zero to get it into the exact same location, like so. And we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to go to Window Outliner. Here's one object. Here's the other one. Okay. And I'll show you. There we go. So we'll just uh, name these. So Polycube 1 is, uh, I'll just call it gray for now. And Polycube 2 is color. Okay. Let's set that back to zero. There we go. We're going to select both. And we're going to go to edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations, and modify center pivot. There we go. So we've got them both selected. They're in the same location. All right. We're going to go to our rendering menu. And we're going to go up to lighting shading and to transfer maps. Let's clear all and just clean things up a bit. I'll just drag this out a bit more. Okay, so what are we doing here? We are creating a color ID mask, right? So we're going to go to Window Outliner, and up here it's asking us for our target mesh. Now our target mesh is our gray cube, okay? So we're going to select the gray cube, and don't be fooled by this. This is just, uh, you know, it's overlaid, so gray, and we're going to add selected. Then it's asking for our source. Where's the color coming from? So we're going to select that. And we're going to select our color cube. And add selected. Okay. 
So gray shape and color shape, fine. Minimize that. Now we're going to go in and select what we want to do. We want to create a diffuse or a color map. And in this case, a special one because it's a color ID mask. Okay, so select that. It's um, showing up as a diffuse color map. We're going to select a folder. We're going to find a location to save that file. I'll save it on my desktop. And we'll call this try color cube ID mask. And save it on our desktop. And I want to save it as a targa file. There we go. And save. OK, now let's see what else do we need to tweak here. So we're going to go down here. It says that it's going to connect maps to shader and it's going to do that as a new shader. That's fine. We're going to go to Maya common outputs. And here it's asking us about the size of the ID mask file that we're going to make. I want this to be a 2K map or 2048 by 2048. OK, world space is fine. Here I have the option low, medium, or high quality. I'm going to go with medium. Uh, I'm going to leave all that. We're going to skip mental ray because we're using my common settings. I'm going to go to the advanced options. Let's see if I need to change anything there. Not really. Let's just quick uh, quickly check everything. Okay, looks good. And I'm going to hit bake and close. Now that could take a while, so I'm going to quickly pause the video. Well, that's our end result. So let's just, uh, first of all, I'm going to go to Window Outliner. I'm going to take my Color Cube and pull that out. Then I'm going to uh, select this guy, this checkered ball. And as you can see, this guy has now been colored. OK, so if I right click on Object Mode and select this, there's only one Lambert instead of over here where we had, you know, all the different ones, okay? And this one is special because this one is using the, um, the color map, if you will, that we just used, okay? Now that we have that set up, and I'll just check that file in, um, in actually I'm not, I'm gonna show you later. So we've got that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to export this cube as an OBJ file, okay? So first we're gonna triangulate it. So we got it selected. We're going to go to polygons to mesh and triangulate. Reason being that a lot of um, software packages, like for example, Quixel, they want you to triangulate your mesh before you export it. Okay. So I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to go to export selection. Where do you go? Export, export, export right here. Option box. I want to export it as an OBJ. All right. So export selection. It's going to ask me to name it. And I'll call this um, try color cube OBJ. And save it on my desktop as an OBJ. All right. OK. So I think we got all that. All right. Then we're going to switch to Photoshop right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to open Dedo. And right here, I have the option to load a mesh and to load an ID map. So I'm going to click on mesh. And I'm going to select my OBJ file, which is tricolor cube OBJ. There we go. And open. And I'm going to select my ID map. So I'm going to go down to uh, tricolored cube, not that one. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. OBJ uh, right here, ID mask. OK. And open. All right. You already saw a quick pre preview there. Now we get the option to select links. OK. So I'm going to click on links. And I'll just wait until it's reading the file. And it's going to show up with these colors, right? And this is our color ID mask. And it's asking us to replace the primary colors that we have chosen with other materials. So I'm just going to click on the red box here. 
and I'm going to go up to, let's say, leather, and I'll go to leather worn. Okay. Then the next one, I'll do, let's see, metal, and I'll do, mm, let's see, something cool. Uh, painted metal black. Why not? And we'll take the third one and we'll do stone and we'll do uh, gravel. Fine. And we're going to select done. Okay. So now that I got that all set up, I'm going to, uh, let's just uh, check this guy here. I'm going to create base. And now it's processing and that could take a bit. So uh, it's doing all sorts of calculations and creating masks and so forth. So I'll just pause the video and see you guys in a sec. All right, guys, there you have it. Well, um, it now translated our, our color ID mask into a, um, a file with the corresponding materials as we selected, right? And here you can see we have the dirty worn leather, we have the black gun metal that we selected, and we have the rock, okay, based on the three bands that we created. And over here you can see the layers that have been created in Photoshop, okay? And, you know, it's all done automatically. Now, it would be kind of cool if we could see this on our actual object, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start up 3D, okay? And we'll give that a sec. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. It's loading up. <clears throat> okay. Well, there you go. There's our cube. And if I now left click and drag, I can rotate, rotate this guy around. And you can clearly see based on the lighting that we have the black metal going on, right? And we have the, uh, I think this is the leather and the top this right here is our granite okay so pretty cool right now so we did all that now what okay I want this texture to be on my um, Maya model okay so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna minimize that I'm gonna save out this file so I'm gonna go to file and uh, let's see save as I'm gonna save it as a PSD file and I'll call this uh, try cube texture. And again, as a PSD file, I'm going to save this uh, on my desktop once again. There we go. And save. Uh, yeah, fine. All right. And now let's go back into Maya. So we have our, uh, this guy, we don't need that anymore. So we're gonna delete him. And this guy right here, we're gonna right click and assign new material. And we're gonna select the Lambert. So that's all gone. And then next to our color tab, we're gonna select this. And instead of selecting a file, we are going to select a PSD file. So we're gonna select PSD. We're going to select it. We're going to check our folder, go to our desktop, and here is our tricube texture.psd file that we just created. Okay, select open. And here you can already see that that texture has applied, but what I'll do is I'll create a light source. So create lights. Let's do a point light, pull that back a little bit, and let's hit seven on our keyboard. And we're going to increase the intensity of the light quite a bit. Let's do 15. That should be good. Where's my light at? Oop. Window outliner. Point light. There you go. We're going to hit W. We're going to pull that back. And we're going to hit T to position our light. Come on. Let's play ball, little lighty. Okay, looks like I'm a bit off. Come 
why am I not getting any light? All right, I just uh, quickly changed my light source to a directional light, and uh, that works a bit better. So if we move this around, you can clearly see that it's affecting our material. And that is all there is to it. I'll just uh, bump this up so we can see it a bit better. Whoa, that's a bit too much. Three. Okay, so as we move along, you can see very nice texture. Okay. So that is how you create a color ID mask. Uh, hopefully you now understand the purpose of it and how you can create one and apply it using Maya and Quixel. Okay. Well, guys, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you if I can. And that said, I'd love to see you guys again. Bye.